So here we are back on the Jeep. I'm wondering if I may be in a little bit over my head here, but we'll see. Now this fender is by far the roughest part of this vehicle. I'm going to do my best to fix it. If I can't, I mean, I guess I'll just try a replacement fender, but you know what? I've got the other side kind of to reference and to know what this is supposed to look like. So I'm going to do my best to build this skin just out of some flat stuff I've got here. And uh, we'll see how it goes. So now I'm going to do this in a couple of pieces. I'm going to go, say, to about here. And I'm going to build this chunk here. I'm going to stay below and try and retain this, uh, this factory bed piece and that's why I want to stay back a little bit because it's a little bit effed up here. I'm not sure how that happened. I didn't even think it was like that before. But anyway, that's going to be the next problem. So that'll be piece number two. If I get piece number one and piece number two and then th this is actually, it looks like complete shit but it's it's all salvageable once I, once I get this stuff out of there. Big thing I don't want to cut anything out before I absolutely have to because you know what it's like I want to I want it to remain the exact factory shape as much as possible this is gonna be fun so this here is my sheet metal brake I built it um, and I actually made a video about it on my channel if you want to check that out it's uh, this is basically what I built it for, and this is the first time I'm using it, so bear with me. Hopefully I don't screw this up because I will have to go and get some more metal if I do. But uh, what I need to do is I need to, to bend a 90 degree angle right here that's an inch and a half. So because that's that basically will become the flange that bolts to the tub. So let's see, let's see how this is going to go. Bear in mind, this is the first time I've ever done any of this crap, so see how it's going to turn out. And to do this without slashing my hand, open will be a feat in itself because Measure twice, bend once. Well, this stinks. Um, that's, I guess, what you get when it's the first time you're using a tool like this. You don't know if you did a good enough job of it. What's happening here is this is bending in the middle. So either I'm going to need to stiffen up that piece or maybe uh, put a third handle in here and either way we can make this work it's just uh, 
maybe not necessarily perfect the first time. So you can see it did make a nice straight bend there, but it's not as tight as I think it needs to be. So I'm gonna mess around with this a little bit more and it's, not, it's gonna work, it's gonna be fine. I just have to massage that bend a little bit and make it, make it a little bit more what I need. So I guess we'll cut that piece, looks like about 16 inches, or 12, 12 by, 12 by 16, and that'll give us a little bit extra if we got trim or whatnot, whatever we got to do. Get this piece figured out, so then we'll be able to get this piece figured out. This is nice and solid, but it's... Uh, don't look the best so we'll grind her up and see what we got there see if we can straighten that stuff out i see something was bolted on here whether that's where the stock flare bolts on or whatnot this one's broke out but uh we won't worry about that for now we'll stick with us so to tighten up this corner and just make it a little bit sharper than i could with my uh my first attempt at making a sheet metal break there what I did is I just, see, I clamped it to my, my handy dandy I-beam that just so happened to be the right length kind of for what I was looking to do here. And I'm just going to tap that edge flat with a body hammer and that should that should tidy it up because that uh, the edge of that I-beam is, is nice and straight. So that's better. It's uh, still not perfect, but I'll be able to tweak it to make it what I what I want. It's uh, it is going to be worth my while to screw around and and get that sheet metal break to be what it could be because like the edges are are pretty much perfect. It's just the center where that thing was bowing out. That's still giving me a little bit of trouble, but uh, you know what? We're still going to be able to make this work. It's going to be just fine with just a little bit of screwing around. But uh, hey, you know what? We're learning, and and that's good too. So I just made this template off the non-screwed fender. Now I'm going to transfer that over to the other side to get the shape that I need for that big old patch that I'm building. And now that's transferred onto there. Only problem is I really stink when it comes to real precise cuts. And I really want to make sure I keep as close to that, uh, as close to that, that shape as I possibly can. So I don't know what I'm going to do, but I guess I'll figure something out. So I ended up, I just cut it as close as I felt comfortable cutting it to my line just with a with a 120 volt sheet metal shear thing that I've got and I got right up close to the line 
with a pair. I got a real nice pair of uh, just aviation tin snips. It's the only really way that I feel comfortable trying to get a real nice shape. Now, the bad part is it does sort of sort of misshape the edge of the piece that you're cutting. But I just, I find it easier to, to tune up that little bit of misshaping where basically it's the, the spots where you snip and then you start your next snip. You get just a little wee bit of a bump. But honestly, if put it on an anvil or put it on something and just tap them out. They, they, they disappear really easily. So that's the way I do it. I'm not saying you got to do it that way, but that's the way I do it. And I, I feel the best about my final outcome when I do it that way. So of course this is backwards, but uh, basically if you can see here, I don't know if I'm going to be in the way or what, but this is how this thing's going to fit. It's, it's pretty much, I still got to tune up my, my 90 here. But that's going to pretty much be the first of the, the couple of patches that I need for that uh, fill in that gargantuan hole in that other fender. Well, now I'm making things better. Let's, let's hope I'm making things better anyway. Now, I just chopped that big old chunk of what used to be fender out of there. And I know people are going to say, and they're right to not cut out any more than you need to. But I had to see what was in behind there. And being as this is so close to the battery, I was honestly shit scared that I was gonna come up with a whole bunch of rust and whatnot in there, which I didn't, and that's good. But the key is now I have to find, I have to build this in before I can build the outside on. And I've thought about pulling the fender off, but I think I've convinced myself not to. I'm just gonna take, the, it just bolts on right here and the bolts are easier than usual to access, I can tell you that right now. I'm gonna pull off only what I have to pull off and keep everything else somewhat intact. I, I, maybe this is the right way to do it, maybe it's not, but that's the way I'm gonna do it. So plans change, as usual. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stop my patch going all the way back right here. And I might actually do this in two pieces and then a third piece over there or something like that. But uh, just I'm getting into really nice metal here. And I'm thinking there's no point cutting it out if I don't got to. But something I'm definitely going to do when I'm done all this. Like you see where all these were sandwiched together. And that's where all the rust and rot and crap and corruption started. So <clears throat> I'm going to make sure that's all cleaned up. And I'm going to make sure that it gets a decent coating of some kind of magic rust rejuvenation spray or some crap like that. And uh, maybe it'll last till my great grandkids can drive this jeep or something who knows so that is what the first little piece the outside piece is going to look like i just i basically i installed it with these little cleco fasteners they're they're kind of a neat deal i've never used them before and uh i think they're going to work out real well now you don't have to use them you can just use sheet metal screws wafer screws whatever you want it's just to hold it in there temporarily, but the key is I want to make sure that patch goes back in there identical, same spot every time, because that's kind of, I'm going to build my inner structure to match that panel, if that makes sense. Um, I'm really happy, like I just bought a cheap little package of Clico fasteners and the tool from Summit Racing one time just because I thought it was a good idea. And I finally get a chance to use them, and it's pretty neat. Now I think what I've decided to do, I'm, I'm most concerned with how it looks on the outside, obviously. 
So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut out and build this next outer piece. And once I've got it there and I can, I can kind of locate it with another couple Clico fasteners or something like that, then I'll be able to tear into building that inside structure because, I mean, it all kind of ought to got to be there too. So, uh, I don't know, like I told you, I've never done a whole lot of this work in my life. I, uh, I've learned a whole ton from a YouTube channel called Fitzy's Fabrications. And, uh, he's really an inspiration to a lot of the stuff that I'm willing to, to try because he makes it, he makes such a nice job of it and he makes it look so dang easy. I know it ain't that easy, but. I'm going to give it a go. Now, if you stuck through watching me struggle with that last little bit, if you look right here where I've just got a really thin piece to cut off, this is just going to trim off beautifully. Before, when I was struggling, um, I was just trying to take too much. And with that, with that power jobby, I'm just getting used to it. You can't use it to to fine tune trim it needs to be in it needs to be in full face metal or else you don't cut worth a particular shit but uh, overall that oh, one more cut that's getting closer to the to the shape that I'm gonna need it now this is what I'm talking about uh, with just flattening this out afterwards I'm just using a flat hammer and this is just a nice thick solid piece of metal and I just give it a little tap wherever there's any of these high spots along the edge bear in mind these edges will end up getting getting welded as well so there's gonna you're, you're never gonna be able to see any of this or or, or know that any of it ever happened. So that's uh that's ready to to blam on the car. See if we can hold that on with a couple of clicos and we'll be good to go. So there is my second patch. Um, it's gonna take a little bit of love up here, even after I put that in. But you know what? That's okay. Won't be anything that I can't manage. And uh, I actually tried to put another Clico in there, but there was there was nothing to hold it to. It was just kind of kind of rot down there. So anyway, I'm gonna pull these off, and we're gonna start figuring and sorting out the the backside here. So you can see by the sharpie marks, um, I'm not gonna cut quite that much out, but I know I have to stay inside of that. I'm going to do a few more exploratory cuts just to see what I do and don't got underneath there. Um, it's a shame that the rot goes so high on that fender above the wheel because uh, well, I, I did a small chunk on the other side and it didn't go that high and it made it a whole heck of a lot easier repair. But you know what? Uh, one way or the other, we'll sort it out. So I guess a person can't use Clecos for everything. Uh, I had to use a couple of these self-topping wafer screws here just because I needed to be able to put this piece on top so that I could trace out this uh, this curve. 
and obviously with that Clico sticking out two inches there's no way I could do that so no big deal just zipped in a couple of a uh, couple wafer screws and away we go so that is uh that's the pieces that I need and I know it's kind of a patchwork quilt looking thing but you know what I can weld that up and it's going to be skinned over so nobody's ever going to see it but I will I'll metal finish it as nice as I can and make it look like something I really wish I had picked up a new bottle of gas otherwise I would start welding this in right now but you know what I think probably what I'll do is I'll work on building the uh the uh stiffener piece that goes in above the above the wheel on that part of the fender that'll be what we'll do next so i changed my mind i just decided i'd tack that little piece together and uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure everything's good and i'll grind those flat a little bit and pound them out make sure that everything's nice and flat before i finish welding it i always i always have trouble lining up one uh one panel to the next and i don't know whether it's because i rush or what i always tell myself don't rush but i do and anyways i'll i gotta fix that up a little bit but should be no big deal if i do it now up here i don't know if there's a little bit of impurities in the in the metal or what the deal was but i'll have to clean that up a little bit and take a little bit of pissing around to get that thing to uh weld up right but it should be okay well, it's a good thing that first one's going to be hidden on the inside layer because uh, I haven't done this for a while and it didn't turn out quite as beautiful as I'd hoped. And, well, I'll still be able to clean it up a little bit better than that. But, honestly, I'm not too, too worried about it. This one's starting to look a whole lot better already. And uh, I did these inside ones first. Because I wanted to warm up and kind of muscle memory remind myself how to do this stuff so that when I do the outside ones and the stuff that really matters, I will uh, make it look like look like it should look make it really look like something. There now that one turned out a whole lot better. I was uh, I took my time and uh, still a couple more little just tiny ass touch ups that I could do to it. But I'm probably just going to leave it as it is because it's it's an inner panel. Now, what I got to do is I got looking at some pictures of the other side. And I'm going to see if I can set up my, my bead roller and just roll a little bead. Just kind of do a little offset along that, basically the left side as you see it in this picture. Just so that it uh, a little bit closer to matches the factory deal. Well, note to self, meant to anybody else who cares. If all you got is a hand crank bead roller, trying to do that yourself with uh, without some help and somebody else running the crank for you is a real pain. So uh, I did it. May not be perfect but it's gonna work out. Let me show you what I did. Now this here is the cheapest bead roller on the face of the planet. Um, I got it from Princess Auto, but you know what? It actually, it works pretty good. And there's a few different videos on YouTube about stiffening, stiffening these up and uh, modifying them to make them a whole lot better. I'm going to do that at some point, so stick around, you'll be able to see it on this channel at some point, but for now, it actually worked out really well for what I needed to do, and uh, let me show you what I made. So this is that piece that I just finished welding up. Um, you can see I just welded just a little step into it along there. I, I wasn't able to finish it right along till the end because of that 90 degree bend, but you know what, it doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure this is gonna be just about right. It, uh, it's a whole lot closer to like it was from factory now. And I'm gonna dose this all up with some paint and whatnot and get ready to install this in the Jeep. So I guess I'll, uh, I'll weld this piece in first.
It's fitting in there pretty good. Um, I just got to be super careful and not rush like I always do. And it should turn out pretty good. First pass. So far, so good. Well, that turned out actually really nice. There's a little couple pinholes there I got to just still fix. But uh, turned out pretty dang good. And uh, luckily, I'm getting good. We're getting good again at the stuff that you can't see. So ideally, by the time I get to the stuff that you can see, I should be doing really good. Now, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but I am just trying to tell you what I do. I'm not a big fan of weld through primer. I can't weld through it. It welds just like you're trying to weld through dirty metal. So what I pretty much always do is I treat the metal that I'm sandwiching or whatever that, that's going to be hidden with just whatever kind of cheap rust primer that I can get my hands on. And I just scratch it away from the places where if I need to plug a weld or if I need to do anything like that. It's honestly, the paint is way cheaper. And like I said, I've had no success uh, welding through that weld through primer. If I'm doing it wrong or you know a better way, just put it down in the comments. Let me know what where I'm failing here. But that's the way I'm doing it for now anyway. Now that's not uh, finished bodywork perfect. But back there, it doesn't have to be. Now I will, from the back side, once I get the fender off, I'll have to finish up. Like I couldn't weld the inside of that. Like we're at, we're at 90s back. But I'll do that once I get the fender off. But as far as this goes, this looks pretty good. And uh, now I'm ready to start fitting that front piece on. Only thing I'm really worried about, not worried about here. But when you get over here, this metal is super ass thin. Like you can see, I, I just knocked a chunk out of this. I'm going to have to sort something out for a patch there. This may end up getting bigger than that but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this piece in that piece that i showed you earlier and uh whatever we have to do after that we'll we'll do after that so now i'm not sure how i'm going to go about this because i'm going to lose all my uh all my clico holes so i think what i'm going to do to start is i'm just going to cut this corner out Clico it in place with the other ones and maybe try and tack this corner in. And uh, if that pans out, maybe I'll be able to just finish cutting down. Here. Like I'll probably cut right down to about here. Just finish cutting that last little bit. And that'll kind of set it here. And as I, can, as I can pull that patch away, I'll just continue to... Uh, continue to weld it in and if I do a really good job of getting this corner in the right spot I really truly do believe the rest of it should lay right out and hopefully I can leave this one in here just till the very end and then kind of the last cutting I'll do is just knob that out of there but uh, what I did is last time I had this on there it's tough to see with the you see there's just the that's how much has to come off to uh make the panel fit right for welding so i'll maybe just trim that piece too i'm just really nervous about welding that because it's so damn thin i'll i won't honestly be surprised if i blow that so full of holes that i don't even bother welding this piece and i just come up with another patch in there later but uh you know what I didn't have anything. I had a complete piece of crap when I started this fender. So I really think it's going to turn out. But if it don't turn out, I guess whatever it was screwed before and it'll be screwed after, I'll just be out the time. But uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to turn out. So that looks pretty good. It's still clicoed here and it's still clicoed here. But. Uh, I'm not sure now 
if I should start welding that onto the fender or if I should go ahead and put the lip in here. What this lip will do is it'll keep it poker straight this way, which is important. So I think that might maybe better be my my next step rather than getting too much ahead of myself here. So that lip is tacked on from the inside and that turned out good. And uh, I actually tacked this corner in. It turned out pretty dang splendid, I have to say. So now what I gotta figure out is I just gotta cut this out so that I can keep spotting that in. And same thing down here, I gotta cut from about here to down below this Cleco. But I can still pull this fender out a little bit. I'm just not sure what in the hell kind of tool I'm gonna use to, to do that. Now this little pneumatic death wheel is what I used to do the other cuts. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's going to be what I'm going to have to use to, to do this cut too. Um, you know, these, these blades can never be thin enough. But uh, I think this will be okay. I'll have to take a page out of uh, Fitzy's Fabrications and his cut and butt. And just cut this on a bit of an angle and ideally it'll fall right into place and be just what I need. So that cut pretty good and uh, tacked in pretty good. Now of course I'll have to weld in my Clico hole. But uh, I'll do that when I get into finishing up, stitching up that whole panel. Now I just gotta cut this little bit right there. See how that's gonna go. Well, she is... Uh, Tacked in all the way around. Actually, pretty happy with how it looks overall. The only thing that I ended up having to do is right here. I actually had to cut it with my body saw because for whatever reason, this whole side was fitting really good. And then it from here on, it, it sort of took a nosedive. So to get this back up to where I wanted, I just had to slice this ever so slightly and uh, bring it back into shape. <coughs> I honestly think where the problem came in was <clears throat> when I hammered this flat, I took it, I ground it down a little bit and I, I put it on and I hammered it flat and I think it just spread, just that bees whisker right here and that's what caused it. But you know what, it was super easy to fix that way. <clears throat> and uh, let's see hopefully this is going to turn out this was the only real bad thin spot so I'm going to I'm going to kind of somewhat finish weld this and I'm going to worry about this afterwards because actually I've got another uh, that's obviously a hole underneath there that I'm going to have to deal with afterwards too but that's really not that big of a deal I'm honestly really happy with the way that's going to pan out and you know the funny thing is the majority of it gets covered with a fender flare anyway so uh it'll look good we'll make it look good but a, a good chunk of it you're not even going to be able to see so i got that all pretty much dressed up it needs a little bit more but uh i'm super sick and tired of it so i'm just going to move on and do a couple other pieces but really happy with the way it's looking so far so now who designs this shit i mean look at that that is like absolutely made to stack crap up in there and start to rust now look at that there's there's even a nice little notch there for stuff to fly up out of the wheel well and get in there so that it causes rust this is freaking stupid I'll clean it up, I'll rust treat the living crap out of it, and you know what, I'm sure it'll be fine. And I'm even going to do something to plug that stupid dang hole there so this doesn't happen again. But who designs this shit? I just don't get it.
So now we got a couple more little patches to do. We'll do that one. And it was just so thin. And there was actually, there was a crack here. I don't know if it was some bad bodywork previous or just coincidence. I don't know. But uh, anyway, it was just way too thin to do anything with right here. So I'm going to build a patch just for this area. And I'll show you my idea for uh, for matching that curve. Now what I used is actually just, this is this is an old piece that I cut out of the fender down there. And I just, I held it on there. I wish I would have recorded myself doing it, but I, I bent it as close to the shape as I could. And then I took it off and I just give it a little bit more, uh, just by hand. And you lay it back on there and it, it, it actually sits on there really, really nicely. I'll just, uh, I'll cut it down a little bit. I don't, I don't want to make it any bigger than I have to, but I still want to ensure that I get into good metal because all along here, though I did get it, actually, I still got to fill it in a little bit there and a little bit there, but I got kind of sick of it. So, uh, it was super thin, but I made it happen and, uh, it's going to be good enough for this non show car body job I'm doing. I mean, this one will just be a straight up almost square patch that I can weld in there. And this stuff though, I put a bunch of rust treatment in there. I'll blob a whole bunch more in there just to make sure that's not gonna rust back once I get it all sealed up. So I just stuck my little patch on there and uh, traced around it with a Sharpie. I'm gonna cut that out with, uh, with just with a zip cut. I know it's going to be a little small, especially like here and here because the piece has to drop in. But uh, I always would rather it be small than big because, I mean, I can take a little bit away and I can fit it real nice. But when you're starting to fill gargantuan craters and gaps and whatnot in your bodywork, that's not always the best thing. So uh, this is the way I'm going to approach it anyway. So now I got nice sturdy metal to uh, to weld to, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna trim my hole and or my my patch until I got a real nice fit in there that I can tack in and start welding it to place. So that's pretty slick. I'll just. Uh, I'll make sure that's sitting in there just right, but I'll uh, dress those pieces up, get rid of all the, the paint off of them, and I'm just going to weld that in. So I got that fitting pretty good, tacked in there nice. I'm just going to work on that other little patch I got to make, and I'll kind of finish weld the two of them together, because you know, it's like you got to move and wait and tack and wait, and it's... That's honestly the part of this job that I dislike the most. But uh, we'll build another patch here anyway. Now I got another piece of this metal that I cut out of the bottom. And uh, I'm just going to start screwing around until I get something that's going to gonna cover that hole. There's another little patch fit and uh, ready to peel the paint off of it and just tack it in there. I'm, I'm really happy with the way this part's turning out. So there is our holes up top. I got just a little bit more cleaning up to do in that corner. And uh, I haven't decided what tool I'm going to use for that. But uh, one thing I will say, I have to finish a couple things off. Right here, where this wrapped around... I've got to weld that, but I can't weld it until I take the fender off. Main reason that I wanted to do it this way was so that I could kind of retain the shape of the whole thing while I was, uh, while I was welding it. Now, I don't want anybody to think that I'm pretending to be a coach builder. I know this is obviously going to require some additional body work. But i tell you what I did. I took a fender that was ready for the scrap 
heap. And I made it something that's definitely going to be more than usable for this application. It's not a show rig. It's a driver. And this fender is going to be excellent in this application. I'm really happy with myself. One thing i got to say, the more you do this, the easier it becomes. Just, there's a few things that, that a guy really needs to concentrate on. You don't need the fanciest tools. You don't need the fanciest welder. You just need some patience and you just need to know a few of the basics and you need practice. And if you look at this, this is the amount of that fender that's actually going to show once the stock style fender flare gets put on there. So that's another reason that I wasn't super concerned about uh, the metal finish. Now, right here, where the two patches went together, there's going to have to be a little bit of filler just because I got a low spot there and I'm not sure why, why, but honestly, it's one of them things just practice, practice makes perfect. There's one thing I will tell you, there'll be nowhere on this whole fender that has more than like a, a 16th thick of body filler on it. And I'm pretty happy with that. So that's it. Um, I'm going to call that good for now. I do got to pull that fender off and finish it up. But you know what? It's no big deal. And it's just going to be a little bit more of the same metalwork, weld, rinse, repeat. Main thing I wanted to share with this video is if it, it was if it was screwed when you started, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You got to replace it. Well, you know what? You had to replace it before because it was screwed. So give it a try. I mean, what do I got? Maybe, maybe 30 bucks all totaled in metal and welding materials in that fender. Sure, I do have a, sh a buttload of tools. And they do, you know, tools ain't cheap. Tools ain't free. But... You can buy a lot of that stuff and pay yourself by working with it. And you know what? You don't have to have the fanciest stuff. My air tools are all cheap Princess Auto stuff. And I, I, don't, I don't have, I mean, my welder, <clears throat> it's a decent Hobart 120 volt welder with gas. But I actually, to be honest with you, I... I got that as as a, a safety word through work. So just fortunate, I guess. But needless to say, you, you don't need an expensive welder. I, I could have did that with a flux core. Lots of guys say that you can. The only thing is there's just a, a whole lot more cleanup after the fact. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it maybe inspires somebody to just get out and try this. It was screwed anyway, so now I got a good fender for 40 bucks instead of the 450 or 500 bucks that I might have had to pay for a uh, for a repop fender. Or, I mean, if you can find a used fender, they're like freaking rare as hen's teeth around here. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it's been a lot longer video than I anticipated. But honestly, it was a little more work than I anticipated. It was just, you know, you got to take your time. You got to be patient. Uh, one of the big things that I had to remind myself, you create a shitload of heat grinding too. So you got to be careful. Yes, you create heat when you're welding, but you're also creating heat when you're grinding those welds down. So big thing, don't put big humongous globby tacks on there. It's easier said than done. And when you're grinding, grind a little bit, take a break and let it cool. Grind a little bit. Take a break and let it cool. That's the biggest thing that I can say about this whole process is patience. Anyways, I appreciate y'all watching. And uh, hopefully you, you know, maybe like the video, subscribe to my channel. And uh, I'll be doing a bunch more little patches on this Jeep. 
and each one presents its own interesting little set of challenges so stick around follow along with what i do thanks for watching